when Springfield Armory released the Model 2020 Waypoint, it made a splash in the market and they came out with a rifle that was as near to custom as you could possibly be for a production hunting rifle. Now they have the all new Model 2020 Redline model. The Redline model, what you see here, has a few differences while still maintaining the great things that came from the Model 2020 Waypoint. The Model 2020 Waypoint, with that rifle, you had the 2020 action as they call it, which if you're not familiar with this action and you've never touched it, I'm here to tell you that it is easily probably one of the nicest production actions you could possibly buy. It is smoother than your Vergara's and your Christensen rifles. It's smoother than fierce actions. It's nearly as smooth as I would say from Tika, which is a completely different design, except with this 2020 Redline. The action is buttery smooth. There's no hinks in it whatsoever. The bolt just glides. It is extremely smooth. And that's probably one of the best features. Now, in the past, we did review a 308 waypoint and that model was extremely smooth. I shot probably close to 300 rounds through that rifle itself before we actually had to send it back to Springfield. And the rifle was extremely accurate and very reliable. I used it to actually kill a hog in Texas with it. It shot well. I mean, no issues feeding whatsoever through a number of rounds, different types of magazines and things like that. And it was a really, really smooth rifle to shoot. But what makes this rifle different than the previous Waypoint model, which they still have? The new Redline model, as you can see, is in a completely different stock. This stock is the Graybow Trekker. The Graybow Trekker is made to be an extremely lightweight stock. And this rifle is extremely lightweight. As you see this rifle sitting here, okay, completely set up, which I will go over with you, is an 8.2 pound rifle. That's with an Atlas bipod, an Area 419 Picatinny rail that mounts onto the two bipod studs that come on the stock. And then up top here, I have a Vortex Razor HD LHT 3 to 15 by 42 power scope. This is the MOA model. It's a perfect setup rifle scope weight at 19 ounces. I have their Pro Series rings on here. And then on top of this rifle, what's also different from the standard 2020 Waypoint model, the Redline has a 20 MOA Picatinny rail, which if you're not familiar with the old one, they had a standard zero MOA rail. And it's good to see that they went with that 20 because it helps you get a little bit extra distance out of the rifle. But again, everything set up on this rifle with my complete setup with this Vortex optic, this Atlas bipod, the Area 409 rail, the rings, this rifle is at 8.2 pounds, completely set up. It's extremely lightweight, it has a 20 inch 6.5 Creedmoor barrel on here that is made by BSF barrels, and that has Springfield's radio port muzzle brake. This rifle, as light as it feels, is truly incredible. Because if you're not familiar with the last model, I had that rifle set up at nine pounds, okay? And this rifle is at eight, Point two, completely set up even with the magazine in here, which I'll talk about that here in a second. The rifle without the bipod on it, okay, without the bipod, without the Picatinny rail that I added, I weighed it is six and a half pounds with the optic, the rings, no bipod on there, and just your sling studs. That is very lightweight. If you're somebody that's looking for a very lightweight rifle for a high country mule deer hunt, a sheep hunt, you know, an out edge sheep hunt, an elk hunt that's, let's say, inside 500 yards with a 6.5 Creedmoor, this rifle will 100% fill all your needs for somebody looking for a very, very lightweight rifle. So take this scope off here that weighs 19 ounces after six and a half pounds, and you're looking at a sub five and a half pound rifle, okay? A sub five and a half pound rifle, the Springfield guarantees three quarter MOA groups. They guarantee a three shot, three quarter MOA group out of their model 2020 rifles. And that's better than Mergara, and Christensen, which guarantees sub-MOA. They're guaranteeing below three-quarter. We will shoot this today. I have no doubt in my mind that it will likely shoot and get that, let's say, accuracy out of it because of how well the other waypoints have shot that I have shot. Now, this Graybow Trekker stock, if you're looking at it and you're thinking it's kind of wonky and it looks weird, it does. No doubt in my mind that that's the case with this rifle. However, it's extremely functional and it's very lightweight. The stock itself has a nice vertical-style pistol grip on there, so you can get a nice you know, shooter's grip for proper shooting position, shooting hand when you're looking for precision shots. Okay, it's cut out here to save weight, has a sling stud in the rear, and then there were two up here. I'll probably change this out and actually, let's say, retrofit it for QD flush cut for myself. And then the rear here, unlike the other waypoint rifle that they have, 
there was no adjustable length of pull. Now with this rifle, there are adjustable length of pull spacers. I've actually taken one out of this rifle to make it a little bit shorter for myself. However, as it fits now on me, it's perfect. Okay, and then on the rear here with this gray bow stock, is there's actually a bubble level in there. Now, if you're not familiar with bubble levels and why you need them on a stock, is that when you're going to, let's say, enhance long range shooting, or you're gonna shoot further distances, it makes a big difference for your windage, especially in elevation too, is that when you're shooting further, you have to have your rifle level. Now, if you're gonna take a hunting rifle out, you don't always get ideal conditions. So you may not know what condition your rifle's in as far as being level, but now with it built into the stock, lightweight, it's already there. You don't have to go and add it to your scope. You don't have to add it to your pick rail or anything like that. It's just ready to go right here on the rifle stock itself. Now with the Redline model underneath here, you do have a three shot or three round detachable magazine. Okay. That's different from when the five round Magpul ones they were using. This model being completely hunting centric has a three round MDT manufactured magazine that snaps in there nice and easy with the down bottom metal that Springfield produces also on this rifle. Okay, now with that being said, this here is an AICS pattern magazine, metal one, here's actually an accurate mag. It fits in there just fine. This actually came off my KRG Bravo chassis that I use on a Ruger American. It fits fine. I'll function test it today to see how it works. I don't think we'll have any issues. Now, if you're not familiar with the down bottom metal here on the model 2020 action, there is actually the magazine release is inside the trigger guard. It works really well. It's very easy to hit. There's no issues getting to it. It's easy to press. Okay. That's probably one of the best things I can stress is that you don't have to break your shooting grip or shooting hand in order to actually press that button inside the trigger guard and drop that magazine. Really nice feature. Now the trigger on here is a trigger tech trigger. I believe it's their field trigger. And the field trigger, if you're not familiar with that, it goes from about two pounds to five pounds. You can adjust it. This was heavy out of the box. I adjusted it nearly all the way down. It's a perfect pull weight now for myself. It's very light, which is how I prefer it because when you're trying to make precise shots, you don't want your trigger hindering you. So it's good to see that you can get a hunting rifle of this caliber, okay, manufactured well, built well, using nothing but high quality components on the, this rifle. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Springfield doesn't build anything on this rifle. And for the most part, you're right, except they build the 2020 action that's inside this rifle, which is hands down one of the nicest factory actions you could possibly buy. Okay, it is a really, really nice, smooth action with no kinks, no hiccups. It feeds reliably, it's smooth. And we're gonna go out and shoot this rifle today I've got Precision Hunter from Hornady. I've got some Hornady American Hunter stuff. I have some match stuff from them. And then I also have some Norma Tip Strike stuff that we're all gonna shoot through this and do some accuracy testing to see how it shoots. And also you guys will be able to see how it feeds. I'll probably throw close to 60 rounds to this rifle today just to get a feel for it because it is brand new out of the box. I have not shot this rifle yet as it sits. So I'll sight it in, shoot groups with it. We'll see how it shoots. Again, I don't think we're having any issues because I've had such good success with the Waypoint model in the past. This new Redline model, I think will be no exception to that. And for myself, this is exactly how I would set this rifle up. A lot of folks, you know, they see Springfield release guns and they come to the market and they have all these marketing pushes, which is awesome to see because it helps more people see their weapons. They did not send this rifle set up like this. This rifle came completely barren. I had to set this rifle up by myself with the bipod, the rail on there was added by me. The scope was sent out to us actually by Vortex. With that being said, I've got a safe full of Vortex products that I've bought on my own according to four and a half to 22 power scope of this Razor model. And I absolutely love them. And they're wonderful hunting scopes that are lightweight with awesome turrets on there that you can pop up, lock them, adjust them, reset to zero, it's illuminated and this rifle is a setup, again, exactly how I would set this rifle up to go out in the field and hunt anything from elk down at, you know, distances, let's say to 600 yards or less. Okay. Because it's a lightweight rifle that can be built for high country mountain hunting. So let's get out on the range, test this thing for accuracy. it will give you guys some final thoughts then. We're at hundred yards now with the all new red line. I have Hornady Precision 100, 143 grain, Norma Tip Strike, that's be 140 grain and then Hornady American Hunter, which is 129 grain stuff. I'm gonna shoot three three shot groups. I'm gonna let the rifle cool between each one of those groupings uh, because obviously I'm trying to get the most accuracy out of the rifle itself. Carbon fiber itself does cool down faster, which is a good thing. And you could definitely shoot some five shot groups, but to save ammo, money, time, and get the rifle to cool faster, I'm just gonna do three shot groups for this rifle. 
and we'll see how it does. Um, so far, you know, I've fired nine rounds through the rifle. It's, it's shooting well, it's shooting accurate already. Um, and just to get it, you know, basically feeding and all that stuff seems to be perfect. So let's, let's do some shooting. Well, that's an excellent looking first group. Definitely gonna meet that accuracy guarantee that they're claiming of. Let the rifle cool down here now a little bit in between the next one. The next set of ammo I'm gonna shoot is going to be using the Norma Tip Strike. This Norma Tip Strike, I'm gonna use my Accurate Mag here or AICS magazine that I use in my KRG Bravo chassis for my Ruger American and see how it feeds. We're now gonna move into shooting the Norma Tip Strike stuff out of there. While I was letting the rifle cool, we walked down range, actually measured the target using Ballistic X app. Um, the first group, very first group out of this rifle with let's say that's 12 rounds now total with this rifle, Hornady Precision Hunter, it shot a 0.7 inch group, okay? So actually in an MOA on Ballistic X, it's showing a 0.675 MOA group. So shooting below its guarantee, the very first few rounds out of this rifle, I am not a proponent for cleaning rifles and things like that or cleaning the barrel. I, I don't go into all that nonsense. I've never done it. I'm not gonna start now for me, it's just, just not part of the process that I like to do. Um, you know, guys, I really can't stress it enough how smooth and nice the action works on these 2020 actions. They are so smooth. They function flawlessly. Everyone I've ever had had no issues. And honestly, if you're comparing them to Bergara and Christensen, which I love both of those companies, they make excellent rifles. They're very well known for making high-end production rifles. The Waypoint Action, at the very least competes with those well-established companies. And if you're not trying one of these and you don't try one, you're frankly sleeping on it, shame on you because you're missing out. But let's get into shooting this next group. If that last group from the Hornady Precision Hunter was a, let's say, a less than three quarter MOA group, then that group is probably a quarter inch group that I just shot with the Norma Tip Strike. Absolutely fantastic group. I'll show you guys all this stuff on Ballistic X and the target when we're all done getting all these groups, letting the rifle cool. Accurate feeding, uh, no issues whatsoever. Reliable feeding out of an accurate mag, EICS mag that I actually got with the KRG Bravo chassis. So good to see that it works just fine. Um, for this rifle being a hunting rifle, this three round MDT magazine is absolutely perfect for hunting because you could obviously throw around in the chamber if you want to, then load three in here and have four total if you want, or just run three. Um, many states do have restrictions for the number of rounds you're allowed to have in the rifle or in the magazine. And a three round one flush fit reduces weight and feeds reliably. And on top of that, I frankly despise hinged floor plates because they're a pain in the butt when you go to unload the rifle. And if you're hunting or moving around spots or whatever out in the back country, it's a pain in the butt having to unload the rifle all the time just to be safe. And be able to take out magazine, big deal. So let the rifle cool. We'll shoot a final group then with the Hornady American Hunter. Now I'm gonna shoot the final group, Hornady American Whitetail stuff. Um, the Norma Tip Strike just shot a group where I rifle combo everything, just shot a group that's point one three two moa um, it is literally one ragged hole down there uh, we will definitely be showing you guys this if you guys are new to the channel and you're just tuning in for the very first time i never shoot off lead sleds i always shoot let's say quote unquote free handed per se bagged up you know with a bipod and things like that um, again i don't use lead sleds i don't clamp my rifles i shoot to where a shooter can induce air the reason behind that is, is I can usually squeeze accuracy out of the rifle and get what I need that I feel comfortable and I feel good with. In addition to that, I'm learning how to shoot every single time I pull the trigger. Okay, I'm learning what I'm doing wrong. I'm learning what I'm doing right. I'm learning what feels good. And I'm also getting a better feel for the rifle and how it feels on my shoulder. Because when you put the animal on the line and you have to make a shot, you don't get a lead sled. You don't get a clamp. You might get to put it in a tripod, but if you've never shot off a tripod, 
they can set, tend to be a little bit unsteady under under certain circumstances with wind and things like that so this rifle is shooting lights out out of the box with less than 20 rounds through it right now that nobody would consider this rifle broken in whatsoever and it's shooting groups that are well below its guarantee and you know I know you guys are going to say things like, oh, you know, he's just saying because, you know, he likes Springfield or he's making the video for Springfield. We're making this video for ourselves. We had to supply everything on this rifle. It's a, a very expensive rifle. These are $2,300 rifles. Okay, they're expensive. And it should shoot this good if it's going to cost that much. But there are rifles that cost that much that do not shoot this good. So let's get back on the rifle, shoot this final group, and I will give you guys closing thoughts and we'll check out that target. The rifle just shot a three shot group. The American Whitetail definitely does not shoot as good as the rest. Um, chances are for hunting wise, you know, I'll probably use the Precision Hunter because I have a good history with it. It's taken a lot of animals for me and done a very good job. So the rifle's obviously warmed up. So I'm not gonna overheat the rifle, but I wanna see how the rifle shoots when it's a little bit on the warmer side. Because if you've ever hunted before, no hunting shots are perfect. I've watched myself, I've watched other people. You know, you make a miss on an animal at a greater distance or something like that, and they just don't notice. You might get more shots. So let's see how this rifle shoots after, let's say, six rounds. It just shoots so good. One more for good luck. <laughs> Just shoots so good. Just shoots so good. Chamber feeding. There's little to no doubt in my mind that this rifle more than lives up to a three quarter MOA guarantee. Uh, it's not even close, frankly, to that guarantee. It's well below it. And it's just shooting lights out. Um, hands down. You know, this all new Redline model from Springfield Armory is a absolute knockout. They may not have their long action calibers, which Springfield, if you're watching it, where is the long action calibers? You guys are killing me. This rifle, the Waypoint rifle, this new Redline are fantastic rifles and they just need some long action stuff for, you know, people that want a 300 Win Mag, a 7 PRC, a 30 out 6, you know, that 7 Rem Mag, you know, stuff like that, or even 300 PRC. People want that stuff. So, again, Springfield, I know you guys will watch this. If you're watching, please give me a long action waypoint, or better yet, in this all new red line, because this thing is a lights out shooter. But enough talking, let's go down there, check out the target itself, see those groups, see how it shot. You guys can get to see it then firsthand. I'll even probably be able to overlay some of that Ballistic X stuff so you guys can see those groups and how I measured them. But let's go down there and check out the target. As we were walking down to the target here, um, cameraman Andrew, he actually was laughing at me because I was playing with the bolt. But I mean, there's no slop in that bolt. I mean, it, it's at the level of a, a custom gun, if you're not familiar with custom guns. It's just such a nice bolt. But you know what, enough of that. Anywho, come look at the target here with me. Very first group out of the gun. It's gonna be Hornady Precision Hunter, 143 grain bullet. This group here measured on Ballistic X as a 0.7 inch group or a 675 MOA group. So 0.675 MOA group here. This ragged three shot group is actually a one hole practically, okay? This group measured on Ballistic X as a 132 MOA group, 0.132 inches, okay? absolutely tiny um, one of the finest groups i have ever shot with a rifle um, just a really really nice group i it's hard not to be happy with that this group here obviously is not good that's out of the hornady america whitetail sometimes that stuff shoots okay it shoots about a one inch group maybe at my ruger american which shoots really well never really all that accurate it's accurate enough for some hunters if you don't want to spend the money on these two ammos after I shot that three shot group, I came up here and I shot another three shot group with the Hornady Precision Hunter, which is probably a half inch group. I'm not gonna even ballistic X that. You know, the rifle was heated up at this point and still shooting well. Um, chances are 
I, it's hard for me to say. I always, like I said, I stick to the Hornet Precision Hunter because it shoots so well on all my guns. I've taken a lot of ammos for me and it, it's done a great job. So it's hard for me not to do and stay with it because it shoots so well at long range. But this Springfield Model 2020 Redline is one of the finest shooting hunting rifles I have ever shot. It shoots really well. I think they did an excellent job in making such a lightweight rifle. Again, this rifle set up with the bipod, this Vortex Razor on here, the Pro Series rings from Vortex, a 20 MOA pick rail, a Area 419 rail on here. This rifle weighs 8.2 pounds, and it's an 8.2 pound rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor that shoots groups that are well below their guarantee. It shot a group that is 130 seconds MOA, okay? It's tiny absolutely tiny group it's practically a one ragged hole group it functions flawlessly the action is smooth the trigger is good drawbacks what are the drawbacks to this rifle if you're somebody that doesn't want to spend above two thousand dollars it's not going to be for you it, it never will be okay but if you want a rifle that will shoot lights out be accurate be lightweight have everything you need in a let's say one of the best 6.5 creedmoor rifles on the market from a factory this is it for you. This will fit the bill, okay? Um, one other thing I'll probably make mention of, the rifle does come with two sling studs, like I said. I wish it just had an integrated pick rail in there, but again, this is Graybo's design. They make great stocks, okay? So I put that on there, and I wish it had QD flush cups. But that's personal preference. It's got the level. It's built for long range. The rifle looks a little goofy here on the stock. However, it feels, functions, and shoots great. So I'm not going to complain about that. I have next to no drawbacks or complaints to this rifle. It's just truly a great rifle. If you guys are in the market for a high-end production hunting rifle, you don't want to spend the money for a custom rifle, you don't want to spend above $2,500, the Waypoint model or this all-new Redline from Springfield Armory will be just perfect for you because they are flat-out shooters. They're well-known for being shooters now if you check out some of the forums. So check them out right now because these things are sweet. But until next time, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you've got any questions, drop them down there in the comment section below and you know what in a future video i'll run this thing out to some longer ranges out to six seven hundred yards see how it shoots i don't think it'll have any issues but stay tuned for that in the future you going down to measure it yeah uh, you're honestly not going to believe how small that group is you're not I, i'm telling you right now andrew it's you literally you could literally cover that group with a dime